Good morning, good morning. It is wonderful to be here on the fourth Sunday of Advent. How amazing is that? Christmas is coming the end of this week, and we get to celebrate the entrance of the new king. It is wonderful to be here. I'm Pastor Dan, and as we're here together, my hope and delight would be that the Spirit of God would inspire you and, and grip you this day and so that you might live differently because of his coming. Let us offer a word of prayer as we gather this day. Holy One, as we are here again, may we be open to receive the gift of your presence. May the gift of your love hold us and inspire us, but also we offer those in our community and world that are, are weighed down and, and we are concerned for. May you hold them even in this time as you open us to receive and learn from what you'd say to us. And as we do so, may we then live our coming week in a way that again says you have come and that you have come with, a, with hope and a sense of victory for the world around us. We pray in your holy name. Amen. As we light this first candle, it is to remind us that God's people hoped for a Savior, as we hope to see God in our lives. The second candle is a sign to us that God's people desired God's peace in their lives, God's shalom. Jesus came to bring peace or wholeness into our lives as well. This third candle in Advent, we remember God's love in sending Jesus into the world and Jesus' love for all people. As we light this fourth candle, it is to remind us of the angel's good news of great joy told to the shepherds. God's gift comes to us as well, so that we might have great joy in our lives. A reading from Luke chapter 2. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This candle is to remind us of the angel's good news of great joy told to the shepherds. God's gift comes to us as well, so that we might have joy in our lives. Bow with me. O oh God, let your joy fill our hearts and minds as we reflect on your coming in human form, yet also divine. Well, as we gather this morning, I'd like to have us continue on the journey through the Gospel of St. Luke as we hear again the account of Jesus' is coming and that God's love for us this day again is so profound and so wonderful. Now, there are various ways in which is it expressed about Jesus' coming, one of which is Luke uh, expre uh, delineates Jesus' lineage. But it's different from the Gospel of St. Matthew. So what's up? What's that going on? Well, I'd like to have us pause for a minute just to think about our own family histories. Maybe you'll be getting together with your family this coming week around Christmas, which I hope you're able to do. And there are some good things that go on, and sometimes they're not so good things. And we never know on the front end, but we can look back in the river mirror and go, oh my. Well, part of that is the expectation, the hope that you can get together with people you love. Sometimes we, we have this experience, though, as we look at the history of our world or the last couple of years, that things aren't always going so well. And we might feel like it's so fixed that things aren't going to go well. And particularly as you look around the globe and political situations, you might think it's all fixed, that it's not going not gonna to change and, and things are going to implode. Well, the gospel message is God is doing something amazing and breaking in that as the, the trajectory as you go forward doesn't have to be a disaster that God brings God's Son to reveal a different way, that God's love breaks in. There's a statement, for instance, that I heard over the years, that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, God breaks that mold, that in fact you can, that, that God changes lives. And it doesn't matter if you're a child or an older person, God can in fact do something new. And our confidence, our hope, is that that new thing brings healing to the world. Hence, 
Yeshua, that is, when we hear the word Jesus, the word Yeshua is the Hebrew for it, means God saves us. God brings the antidote. And so let's hear a little bit about the antidote today as we hear uh, from the Gospel of St. Luke. Now, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit to chapter 3 in St. Luke, uh, Luke's Gospel to when we hear the genealogy of Jesus. Now, Jesus' genealogy in, the, in Luke points back, in, in contrast to Matthew's account, to who Jesus' uh, lineage goes to. Now, what about your lineage? Maybe you, go, you can uh, look back a couple years. One of my nephews, uh, his wife happens to have a, a relative that is, I guess, a king or a queen. How cool would that be? Now, I also know that not every lineage is all that stellar. I have another friend who, who looks back on his lineage of his life, and he says one of his relatives was a horse thief and got hung. So depending on where you come out of, maybe it's good, maybe not so good. And maybe you think, well, I had a horse thief in my background, and maybe someone else was uh, not so great, and my life already has this pattern. I'm just going to follow in their way. Well, no. <laughs> That's the point. No, it doesn't have to. It can be different as the Spirit of God breaks in. But we also have to know that we are part of this celestial community, this community that God calls. And that's why it's so important, I think, in Gospel of St. Luke, like, that Jesus' lineage comes through Adam back a little further even. Because we're told in, in the last of the verses, 38 in chapter 3, is that the Adam's father is God. It's, did you ever read that? Adam's father is God. It's one thing to say God created Adam, but it's another thing to say Adam comes from God as a son, that God saw him as his child, that he created and brought into this world. And then we find the lineage continues on down, and we don't hear about Cain and Abel. Some of you know that story. But in fact, we go to Seth, another son, who then we hear about his life, that he, in fact, was in rhythm with the Spirit of God. He was open to the Spirit of God. And the rest of those generations on down through Jesus are part of that. Well, why is that important? Well, again, Luke is talking to the non-Jewish person, particularly that God's grace and love, long before any of us knew or, or had fallen away from God, that God's grace continues into this world. And God reaches all peoples, all ethnicities, all nations. It isn't just through the Jewish community that God's salvation comes. How wonderful is that? And so, if you're feeling a little hopeless today, if you're feeling weighed down by life, this is a message of hope. That God's love continues to break into all persons' lives, if you're open. And I think that's why it is important to think about our response just like in Jesus' story, as he breaks in the world, some were so busy with their lives, they didn't know the Messiah shows up in a little town in Bethlehem in a very humble situation. They're off busy doing other things. Well, maybe our lives are so busy, we don't see God's movement and breaking in our own lives. But that's the truth of it. That even in this moment, as we're here together, that God is calling to you. God can break into your life as well. So, I'm going to leave the Gospel of St. Luke and move to the Gospel of St. Matthew because, again, I think it's an important point that Matthew would like to point out to us as well this day. Is what we hear in the Gospel of St. Matthew, that Matthew doesn't go back to Adam, but in fact, at Matthew goes back to point to Abraham. And why is that important? Because Abraham is a, is a symbol of faith. He lives his life responding to the Spirit of God and living into that. And because of that, Abraham is rewarded with the idea or the, the wisdom, the knowledge that his descendants will be incredibly plentiful and that you and I come from the heritage if we are persons of faith. And so we start off with Abraham. Now Abraham's story, again, is this man who, who's, who responds to the, the community, the local religious community with what he thinks is an act of faith. He's going to take Isaac out and sacrifice him. What a horrible way to uh, start off a religious practice, kill your oldest son. Again, it wouldn't bode too well for my son Daniel if I did that. But what happens is that Abraham, as he's going to slay his son, is stopped by the angel of God. And God provides something else as an offering. And so what we do is we find a shift that the God that Abraham encounters isn't like the other deities that are pleased by bloodshed of the human, other humans around him, but in fact is a God that is not pleased by that, but it could provide something else. And we find that then unfold, and Abraham is stopped, and he comes to realize that God provides others. And so we hear one of the names that 
Abraham calls God as the God who provides. And maybe you need to know that it is t- true for you as well to say that God provides. Yahweh Yaira, the God who provides for us, is also the God that meets us today. But Abraham, because of his o- awakening to that truth, has a shift and does not do that. And then his life is blessed in so many ways that he becomes a blessing to so many. And to this day, we are part of that. Well, following this, we have 14 generations. And it seems that things kind of fall apart because we eventually come to a period in their life where they're looking to have another uh, ruler in the community, the the David, the, the the kingship at that point because they're frustrated with invasions that are coming in the land of Israel and they want a human ruler instead of God being the one that's directing them. But does it go well? No. In fact, we have 14 generations following that. And what concludes that 14 generations is they are hauled off to Babylon. And I think there is a, some sense that there is a teaching in that that humans on their own can't succeed. That is, can't succeed in really bringing peace to the land or the world around them that there needs something more. And I think Matthew has pointed to that, that even, uh, that even with a, a good king, sometimes not so good king, so things don't go well. Maybe this past year and you look at the political situation around you, you're going, oy vey, boy, things are falling apart. Well, when the, 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 the Bible again expresses that we need the Spirit of God to infuse us to be uh, able to reconcile, to be brought together. Now, following that, we then have another 14 generations. And Matthew points to that, that the, the, pro, the prophetic lineage starts coming in. We have prophets coming in. But even with a prophetic lineage, it, we need more. And that's why it's so important. At the end of all these generations, we have Jesus coming in. And Jesus provides that hope that as we hear in one of the stories that Jesus tells, that God sends his own son because nothing else is doing it. You see the world seemingly on a course that's going to implode, but God continues to, to reach out and call us back, call us to healing, and Jesus is that answer. And it expressed, as I mentioned earlier, in his name, the one who brings salvation, the one who brings healing, Jesus himself is the one that God sends to give us a new direction. So things aren't fixed. In some places they talk about karma, that life is sort of fixed, that you're going to get back retribution. Well, Jesus is the karma breaker. Jesus brings new life and hope. No matter what has gone on prior, open yourself to the Spirit of God, and God will break in anew and afresh. And that, I believe, brothers and sisters, is why Christmas particularly is a wonderful gift to us. That God doesn't come with an army to enforce us to, but in fact comes as a child, a baby into this world, that expresses gentleness and kindness that we are called to live into as well as we are open to the Spirit of God today in your own life and in our life, we then are able to see and, and change the course or direction of history. There are, as I mentioned last week in the Gospel, particularly two individuals who are very old who have been filled with the Spirit of God who recognize Jesus as who he was and who he'd become. Are you open to seeing what God is doing in your life today? Have you been prayerful or have you been open or have you been shut down? Well, I would invite you again today to, to change the pattern of your life in a way that allows you to see the Spirit all the more, to see God's love for you. And because as you awaken to that all the more, like 2,000 years ago, the wise men and the shepherds saw something amazing May you see something amazing this day, too, as God breaks into your life and in mine. Amen.
to sleep the angels keep their watch of wandering love O morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praises sing to God the King and peace to all on earth O holy child of Bethlehem descend to us we pray cast out our sin and enter in be born in us today we hear the Christmas angels the great glad tidings tell all come to us abide with us our Lord As we conclude our time together, I hope you have joy this week as we celebrate God's love coming into this world. It reminds me of a song that has those words, I got joy, joy, joy down in my heart. I hope you have that in your heart this week and throughout your life. With that said, let us conclude our time as we invite the kingdom of God, God's presence, God's ways in this world. Even as God has moved so long ago, God moves today in your life and mine. Holy One, we come to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We again prevail upon you to, to bring your spirit into our hearts and minds and in this world. Where there has been brokenness and a sense of dread and a foreboding for the future, help us to know that you are with us in those moments and that you are God that changes history, changes our lives and our world and our hearts. So may your ways come. You know the, the burdens that those who are viewing right now have May you uplift them and break into their world. May we see the miracle of your love today, even as we remember the miracle of your son's coming. As we live this day as well, we pray not only for ourselves, but for those around us, for the earth that needs healing, as we again remember those on the other side of the coast that are, have been afflicted by tornadoes. May healing come to this earth, but also for those who've lost loved ones. For those who are struggling this time of year that with the expectation of things going wonderful but have memories of those who have perhaps died and, and, and they've lost someone, may you encourage them. We also pray for our governments that they will choose to work together rather than compete against each other. May you bring truth and your wholeness come as well. Ultimately, Holy One, though, may we like your disciples and so many, know your spirit and live into the calling that you have for each one of us. As we do so, then may we be a doorway for those we meet this week as we experience and express your love to them as well. We prevail upon you in your holy name. Amen. Now I remind you this coming week is Christmas Day, but we have a Christmas Eve service. I hope you can join us if you're able to. And I look forward to, again, coming to see you this following week and the new year that's going to be slowly uh, coming and unfolding as well. Amen. <laughs>